scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. We sing about what Jesus Christ has done on the cross. We cry and we chant the many things. No. Up from the grave he arose. With the mighty triumph all his foe, we say, he arose the victor from the dark domain. And we say he lives forever with his saints to reign. Remember what you've been singing. With his saints, he does not reign without his saints. Where is the dominion? Where is the excellence? Did the Bible not say to permit your light to so shine before men that they may see your good deeds? They will not see it as light. They will see it as results. He says, and to glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let me tell you this. If we do not learn this, I assure you, we are going to lose a whole generation. Because there are many people, especially the younger generation, they are already getting frustrated. You know, um, the time of our parents, and respectfully speaking, as God was helping us, we're a generation that God has helped to be loyal, even though whether we understand or not, we follow in obedience. But there is a generation right now that has options. And until we propose the gospel that works, I pray that a day will not come when Jesus will be forgotten in our territories. And I pray that when the generation of our fathers transit, it will not be that there was once a time on the plateau that people used to call upon the name of the Lord. May God forbid it in Jesus' name. But it will not just be by wishing. We have to reintroduce the full counsel of God that makes for a victorious and an excelling life. Growth and maturity. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 4, he says an heir for as long as he is a child that he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all thank you so much sir thank you hallelujah show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of Jesus so the first tragedy for the believer who refuses to grow is that you will see the kingdom but never enter the kingdom the same way Moses saw Canaan from afar and yet never entered it we propose so many things about God in church today that we do not have the knowledge nor the intelligence to demonstrate when a student is in school especially in the high institution of learning before that student completes his program, there is something called a defense. Is that true? Where they put together lecturers, veterans in that field. And the student is now asked along his, his questions along that thought line to be able to gauge his understanding so far. 
and until the student goes through that defense he's he's defending his understanding he's justifying why she should be allowed to go there are many believers who have failed that defense we stand before the gates of principalities and powers having come from several backgrounds of idol worship and we dare those gates and say open up and they say you are not the first to stand here your grandfather stood here your grandmother stood here based on what knowledge should the door open and we stand there in shock and remain there because everything happens by knowledge the moment you encounter Jesus Christ the very next assignment of the Holy Spirit in your life is to walk in partnership with the Word of God and begin to open you up to the ways of God it's called the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah are we learning now this is very important Hebrews chapter 5 please from verse 11 Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 Hebrews chapter 5 from verse 11 I read 11 to 14 is that it okay it says of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered seeing that ye are dull of hearing reading to 14 next verse please for when for the time ye ought to be teachers he says ye have need that one teach you again which be the first principles of the oracles of god and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat next verse For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe or he is a child. Next verse. For strong meat, he says, belongs to them who are of full age, who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, please look up. If I call two or three people here, lovingly speaking, and I ask you, how long have you been in church? You may say five years, two years. And I begin to ask you, teach me what you know about prayer. Teach me what you know about faith. Teach me what you know about character. Teach me what you know about Jesus. Teach me what you know about heaven. Teach me what you know about God desiring the believer to excel. You will be surprised how many believers will fail woefully. These are the indices that measure spiritual progress. There are six biblical foundations, doctrinal foundations for the believer. According to Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 1. There are six of them that Apostle Paul teaches us. And in fact, he calls them foundations. And he says, having exhausted this foundation, let us now go on to perfection that means there are still other things outside of that foundation can we read it together hebrews chapter 6 from verse 1 it says therefore leaving the principles of the doctrine of christ let us go on on to perfection not laying again the foundation of number one repentance from dead works number two faith towards god next verse please number three Let's be patient as we allow them pull it up. Of the doctrine of baptisms. Number four, of laying on of hands. Number five, of the resurrection of the dead. Number six, of eternal judgment. I say amen to the next verse. And this we will do if God permits. Hmm. Let us go on to perfection. It is good to have the foundations right because if the foundation be destroyed, the Bible says, what shall the righteous do? But there is nobody who builds a foundation and begins to rejoice. A foundation is powerful. It's part of the component for a house. But a foundation is not a house. There are many other components. Is that true? Have you seen someone who would build a foundation and just rejoice and say, I have a beautiful house and invite everybody and say, listen, don't worry about what you are not seeing. Just focus on the fact that there is a foundation here. 
Now, you cannot call us to celebrate Jesus over your spiritual life if all we see is foundation. We will tap you and clap for you and say, but this is not inviting enough. Unfortunately, in most cases, we don't see the foundation. What we see that brings the beauty is the superstructure. Is that true? You will hardly renovate a foundation. So the foundation is important. But many of us, you've gotten it right with the foundation. But can we move to be able to build that building? Because the Bible says we are like a spiritual house. And for a long time, many of us have allowed ourselves to be incomplete buildings. It says you are a city that is set on a hill. How do you build a city? Every city has foundations, but there has to be a structure. Unfortunately, the world that we live in, they are not spiritual largely. So they don't care about your foundation. They must see the structure that compels them to come to Jesus. Is God speaking to us? Right. Very important. So, when we do not contend for growth and maturity, these are the things that we have at risk. We are not able to step into the fullness of the character and the life of God. Now, very quickly, for this session, let me give us four biblical indices that measure growth and maturity. You can know right now in this conference whether you are matured or not. Number one, four biblical indices to measure our growth and maturity based on scripture. Are we ready? Number one, your degree of conformity. Please write. The first biblical index for measuring your growth and maturity in the kingdom is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus in experience. Powerful. No matter what else you have, that represents growth in order of priority. This is the first biblical index. Your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus Christ in experience. That means if I look at your life, you don't have to tell me I've been a Christian for a long time. I, you should look like Jesus if you are truly his image. Please, please look at me. If you look at the mirror, what do you see there? You see the object. Is that true? The assignment of the mirror is to be a perfect reflection of the object. That means, and, and please, I, I hope that this does not trouble you, but that means if I look at your life, more than seeing a Yoruba man, more than seeing an Igbo man, more than seeing a plateau man, I should see one who heals from a kingdom whose foundation is not earthly. That means that you, have, you should have been so immersed in the life of Christ. I should be at a loss as to your geographic connection. If that does not happen, you are not growing. I shouldn't see you and say you are behaving like them. And without being prophetic, I can almost guess where you come from. Because you are still connected to the limitations of territory. Colossians chapter 3, a long reading. I'm not sure we'll have the liberty to stretch that far. But 1 to 15. Let's try and see how 5. The media works with us. We may be fast. Media, please help us. Grace for you in Jesus' name. So that we'll work together and we'll make it really fast. Colossians 3. And we'll begin our reading from verse 1. I want you to please follow carefully. Colossians 3, 1 to 15. It says, if ye then be risen with Christ. That means if it is true that this is a fact. Seek those things, it says, which are above where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Next verse. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. Now, he never said do not enjoy the things of the earth, but he says your affection. Are we together? Your focus must be on things above and not things that are in the earth. Why? For ye are dead, he says. Remember our definition of death? 
that means that you have been caught away from another life and you have been reconnected to another you are dead and your life is hid with Christ and in God now the list begins it says when Christ who is our life shall appear then we shall also appear with him in glory mortify therefore the word mortify means to deaden your members which are upon the earth let's read the list now ready number one it says fornication number two uncleanliness number three inordinate affection are we together number four all those long words there number five covetousness which is idolatry so there are many idol worshippers. You don't need to have a small image in your house. The Bible says when you desire something is equal, their weight measured the same in the realm of the spirit. An idol worshipper and a covetous person are in the same group, spiritually speaking, he says. Next verse. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Next verse. In the which ye also walked in some time when ye lived in them. But now put off all these. Believers, are we ready? Because he groups it into two. The first list looks very bad and immoral and many of us escape easily. Let's try this next set now. Put off these also. Are you ready? Anger wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Believers, lie not to one another, uh -huh. seeing that ye have put off the old man. Remember, the water of the word is washing us now. Are we together now? Yes. Seeing that you have put on the old man with his deeds. Next verse. And have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge. Are you seeing how the new, the new man is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him? Next verse, please. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond or free, but Christ is all and in all. Next verse. Put on therefore. So he tells you what to put off. And then he tells you what to put on. As the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, which is patience, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. You see immediately that they are not the same. You can forgive and not forbear. To forbear means to factor in the weakness of that individual and create a system of accommodation because it will happen again and again and again. If any have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, he says, as Christ forgave you, you too, please forgive. I can't see the verses. When we get to 15, please let me know. He says, above all this, hallelujah, put on love. King James says, charity, I like the word love and he calls it the bond of perfectness let's stop there your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Christ second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 is God helping us this morning second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5 to 7 second Peter he says and beside this giving all diligence Add to your faith virtue. The word virtue there means moral excellence. Add moral excellence to your faith. So don't just say, I am a man of faith. Congratulations. What have you added to it? Moral excellence, he says. And to moral excellence, add virtue. Add to virtue, to, to, to virtue knowledge. Next verse. And to knowledge, add self-control. Because the side effect of knowledge is pride. And to temperance, add patience. And to patience, godliness. Reading to seven. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love, which is charity. Hallelujah. It says, add to this. Add to this. Add to this. That means 
in as much as it's fair to pat your back and say wonderful i think i've done well here you must be sincere enough to say have i added this have i added virtue to faith have i added knowledge Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. We call it the fruit of the Spirit. Now notice, notice that there is a difference between the gift of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Are we together? You can give a gift to a child. You can even give a gift to to an inanimate thing you can drop whatever it is a lower animal whatever it is but a fruit is proof that the tree has grown are we together now yes growth must happen before fruit bearing happens in a tree but the fruit of the spirit is this there's a version that says the fruit of the recreated human spirit is love in all of his various expressions then it begins to list this but let's work with this. It says love, joy, peace, patience or long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. And then he makes a very striking statement. He said against this, there is no law. Do you know what this means? He's not just talking about the Old and New Testament. He's saying that anywhere you see human beings who need to coexist well there is no law that should fight this that means this is the ideal atmosphere for human beings to be able to live profitably this is not about spirituality you get dogs because you are looking for peace you lock your gate because you are looking for peace is that true all of the things that we look for in friends we look for in in employees we look for in in our children is simply an atmosphere that has a lavish display of the fruit of the spirit without living in this atmosphere you will die that your spirit was only designed to be alive when it finds itself in this atmosphere where there is love there is peace why do you go on vacation you are attempting to simulate this atmosphere are we together? Yes. Your name should not be the first reason why people suspect you are a Christian. John, Ruth, Deborah, Hannah. If you have to tell people your name for them to know you are a Christian, you are not a Christian enough. Are we together? That the moment you open your mouth and communicate, in fact, your very persona should have been so absorbed into the life of God that when people look at you, before they say you are a preacher, before they say you are a businessman, a lecturer, a career person, their first verdict and conclusion about you should be this man is truly the child of God. My greatest testimony, the testimony I covet, is that at the end of my life, it shouldn't be that people say, this man is this, a great man, you did this and that. Those things are, they honestly don't mean anything to me. I covet the testimony of Enoch. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God. Not walked for God. You can walk for God and not walk with God. You can give to the house of God and not walk with God. You can preach for God. You can do business for God and yet not walk with God. The character of the Spirit finding expression. My charge to us this morning in light of this first biblical index for spiritual maturity is that we must be sincere and look at our lives. Can I truly say the character of the Spirit is finding expression in my life? What is, what is the, the report card 
from my place of work among my contemporaries my spouse my children in church I'm not talking of eye service I'm talking of genuine spiritual growth that people look at you today and they can say he may be any other thing else but I know that this one is true is a Christian when John was speaking about John the Baptist he said there was a man sent from God he never associated him with his earthly his, his, his earthly origin again he said this man he's demonstrated something that is not earthly there was a man sent from God years ago I went to preach it was for a crusade in Kano. And while I was preaching and ministering, I ministered to a dear mother and this woman came out to be prayed for. And when I looked at this woman, the, you could see someone who was an epitome of a genuine Christian. The life and the energy that flowed from this woman was compelling and then the woman told me something she said by the privilege of God's grace held her house her Bible and she finishes the whole Bible every 15 days I said who should pray for who now how do you start praying for this woman what am I going to tell God to do believe me especially for those of us who have the privilege of being in the ministry of the gospel people don't care how sound you are preaching or what kind of thing they want to know that you are a genuine child of God that is the most important thing first and before you are happy that I'm talking about preachers alone this involves every other person too you can't say I'm not a preacher so I am allowed to do my own thing mm -mm. this is a call to higher levels of spirituality where your life and your character becomes a true reflection of Jesus listen let me tell you this when people look at your life you should be what Paul calls a living epistle do you know what that means a living epistle means that if somebody forgot to do his morning devotion, the moment he looks at you, you become a continuation of what he was reading. That your life literally is a scripture explaining many things about God. So if he was reading, say, about the fruit of the Spirit and he had to rush for work, and now he's feeling guilty that I did not read my Bible, the moment he sees you, you become a consolation because he can continue to read his Bible as he looks at you. What do people read when they look at you? For many people, they read a novel, a nasty one that says, this person is not a child of God. For someone, they read and they see that this is a child of God that is easily given to compromise. This is true for politicians. This is true for businessmen. This is true for career people. It is true for all believers. Number two. What is the second biblical index for measuring growth and maturity? Is God helping us? Number two, are you ready? Your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom, your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom, this is very important. Your depth of comprehension of the principles of the kingdom knowledge in one word how do I know you have attained unto a state of maturity knowledge your depth of comprehension 1st Corinthians 14 and verse 20 please 1st Corinthians hmm. God is helping someone but thou O Lord are the shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord 
art a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head i'm saying this because in god is lifting somebody and i believe this that you will look at your former self and marvel and wonder you will know that so this is you know how a snake molds coming out of his former self into a new self you can turn back and people will say something has changed that after what happened to you in the name of Jesus Christ first Corinthians 14 20 brethren he says be not children in understanding how be it in malice be children but in understanding be men you must grow this kingdom is knowledge driven this kingdom dominion in this kingdom you're excelling in this kingdom walking in the victory that Christ has purchased for you is knowledge dependent it's not an issue of sentiments or emotions please listen time will not change anything by default the day you have knowledge the requisite level of knowledge I can hold this mic forever and it never comes on because the knowledge to just turn on this button is not there I can stand blaming the mic I can stand blaming the manufacturer even blaming the one who's giving it to me not knowing that all it takes for me to enjoy the blessings of this mic is to know and you see ignorance in this kingdom is costly and the remedy for ignorance is to find and pursue light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says arise shine for your light is come you don't arise and shine because you are tired of sitting you arise and shine not even because your light is available it's always been there but the day it comes to you it sustains the power to cause you to arise and to shine let me quote amplified i love to quote what amplified says may god bless you it says arise from the depression and the prostration in which circumstances have kept you rise to a new life hallelujah so if you must rise from where you are, please look up. Financially, spiritually, sociologically, career-wise, you don't hand the responsibility over to God and say, One day it go better, we say. If it happens, so it happens. It's a well-intentioned cliche, but it's only a recipe for disaster. If it will ever happen to bring glory to God in your life, it will be at the instance of your accessing light, knowledge. Jesus, from age 12, he went to the temple. What was he doing? He was learning with humility. I submit to you, and I'm, I'm not just speaking to EPC. I'm, I know that there are people connecting from across the globe. I'm speaking generally. Many believers do not rise because of pride not because of the absence of the light it is amazing that you can camp around defeat for many years whereas five minutes of light can be the liberating power light and darkness have never had a reason to be in a contest john 1 5 says and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not are we learning for instance please look up you may find an individual respectfully speaking who may not be doing well financially even though a sincere believer you try to do what you know to do and it looks like it's not working and you do not want to compromise and soil your hands you want to walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity but how many believers have gone to the word of god to find out it is pride to ignore the creator's manual and expect his results no when you buy a product a fridge there is a little pamphlet that is kept there is that true that is the manuals recommend the owner's recommendation for utilizing his product you cannot ignore the owner's manual and then expect to get that result 
God is not only the God of the heavens, he is Father. The word Father comes from the Greek word Abba. Abba means source. Abba means sustainer. Abba means defender. Abba means protector. If this is true about God, where is his fatherhood in our lives? It then means that there is something we are not accessing. Listen, let me tell you this. Until we are willing to take responsibility under God to say, my financial state, my spiritual state, this victory of demons and principalities and powers over my life, the mediocrity that surrounds my life, my job, I take responsibility. There is something I do not know. Until we are willing to take responsibility, we will keep excusing it, sometimes justifiably so, and yet not rise. Let God be true and all men liars. Why does it look like you can have two believers and one person both born again, maybe even born again at the same time? Maybe even mentored under the same assembly or structure. And then you find out that one lives an excelling, victorious spiritual life. One whose life is, is an inspiration to the body of Christ. And then another would live a defeated life, consoling himself. But one day I know that, I, listen, whether you choose to be Abraham or Lazarus, you can go to heaven, but how you get there matters. They both made it. But one went there as a defeated person, scrounging through life, almost missing it. And one went with dignity and honor. Can I tell you the truth? Do not allow your limitations mentor people into believing that that is how God is. If men use my life to learn God, if I am the only Bible they have to read, will I misrepresent God? We have to take responsibility and allow our lives. Part of the reason why we contend for results in every area of our lives is not just for our personal benefit. We are mirrors. We are reflecting someone and we are mandated to reflect him properly. Knowledge. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae and he began to pray for them. And in his prayer, he said he was praying to God the Father that he would grant them Colossians 1 and verse 9. He says, I pray for you to and desire that ye might be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will. And then to be filled in all wisdom and then to be filled with spiritual understanding. There are many things that believers do not know. And we must honestly submit ourselves to learning. Please look up. If a non-believer or a young believer runs to you right now and says, I know you have been in church for 10 years. I have been oppressed. Nothing is working in my life. What will be your recommendation? Like a patient runs to a consultant. And listen, when you, when you talk to a consultant, a consultant is not only one who has gone to school, he's one who has gained experience and has learned until he's been accredited. Is that true? And while the patient is complaining, I have runny stomach, headache, the consultant is looking for certain things. And he can write with uncanny mastery and say, I know what is wrong. I found out. Can you diagnose people's condition spiritually? You don't have to be a prophet. Maturity affords you the opportunity that you can look at a person's life and say, I know what is wrong. The favor of God is not on your life. Genuinely, I know what is wrong. You lack character. I know what is wrong. You do not understand the power of relationships in actualizing destiny. I know what is wrong. There is laziness and laxity. You are not productive and valuable. I know what is wrong. Your prayer life is down. Your word study life is down. I know what is wrong. There, there's the fruit of the spirit not manifesting in your life. When you look at people who are in need, how do you help them? Maturity affords you the opportunity to truly be a blessing. Because with, with a surgeon's precision, you can know what is wrong and what needs to be corrected. As our faces are seated this afternoon morning, 
there are many people who have several issues. I know we are laughing, but there are people who are already quarter to, you know, crying. They are almost giving up. Do we sustain the intelligence to profess solutions that work? I say this respectfully speaking because there is no reason why God should send members to any church that does not have a solution to give. Jeremiah 3.15 and I will give you pastors according to mine heart. He says they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding. That is why I thank God for a conference like this. I see it as, I see it as a determination in the heart of the leaders and the eldership to see to it that we all together rise to higher points of maturity and stature. Hallelujah. I can tell you one thing. We love Jesus and we serve him. Not just because of things. Not just because of results. We love him for who he is. However, in our dealings with God, God is benevolent enough to allow us enjoy the blessings of being his children while we serve him. I do not believe in the Christian expression that allows an individual to intentionally live a defeated life with only heaven as a consolation. That is not in this Bible. The Bible says, I am come that ye may have life and you may have it more abundantly. This is not a marketing of flesh and carnality. Do not get me wrong. But that there is a balance. You can live a victorious life not to wait in defeat and hope that a trumpet will bail you out. He's coming as king of kings. If we are living in defeat, it is not the coming of Jesus necessarily that is the problem. Many people have been resistant to the knowledge that will help us to become excellent in life. You see that? And let me tell you this. When believers do not have consolations to their Christian experience, all the attributes of the flesh will start coming. Jealousy, envy, because if you succeed and you are succeeding extremely, and I'm suffering, I'm not exceeding. It would take God for me to not be jealous and angry and petty. It has nothing to do with being good or bad. It is the natural human condition in the face of frustration. But if we can all rise together, which is God's plan. It is not God's idea for a few people to be superstars doing well and then others sit in admiration and pain mixed with jealousy wondering why their lives are that way. No, no. Everyone has been called with a holy calling. And let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. To the Yoruba person, to the Igbo person, to the Hausa person. It is not your background. Ask Esther. It is not the enmity of your brothers. Ask Joseph. It is not even your mistakes. Ask Samson. It is lack of knowledge. The requisite level of knowledge. For Jesus to produce apostles out of disciples, he spent time mentoring them methodically for three and a half years. Notice the ratio of teaching to impartation or empowerment. Empowerment and impartation came one day, but they were learning every day to the point that when Jesus resurrected, you would think he had time to celebrate his victory. He said, go back. There's still a lot we need to learn. He took them for 40 more days, teaching them on the matters of the kingdom. I am very passionate about learning what I do not know. It does not embarrass me when I find an area of ignorance. There is no point sitting in pride and struggling and paying the price. I will want to tell you this. Challenges are not generic. They are only a product of the limitation of the knowledge we have or otherwise. That means what can be a mountain for you is not a mountain for another person. It is only a mountain because of how our knowledge or ignorance makes it so. This is true. Every time you are bankrupt of knowledge, my Bible says, follow them who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. 
It is the reason why Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16 encourages us. It says that we receive the word of Christ with meekness. It says, let the word of Christ dwell in you in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing yourself in psalms, hymns and spiritual songs that it will dwell in you richly. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Please say knowledge. One more time. There are two reasons, theologically speaking, why Jesus cried in his earth work. The Bible records Jesus crying two times. The first time he cried was in John 11 and verse 35 at the grave of Lazarus. He cried because he had lost someone so dear to him and they said, oh, how he loved him. The second reason why Jesus cried was when he stood over Jerusalem and he cried. He said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, if thou hast known, even in this thy time, the things that pertain unto your peace, he says, but they are hid from your eyes. He cried because he saw a people, though sincere, were mad in all kinds of ignorance. We have responsibilities to go for knowledge, specific knowledge. And let me tell you this, no student learns at his terms. It's not found anywhere. There is no serious student who will learn at his terms. Have you seen a student who will go for lecture and say, lecturer, um, I know that the lecture is by 8, but let me tell you this. Um, you, I paid school fees, so you come by 12, and I'm coming for that lecture hall uh, I'm, I'm coming to the lecture hall with uh, and while he's talking say hold on hold on you are trying I don't know what you are saying I need to pick a call the student submits to the lecturer's intelligence as proof that he's willing to learn I will tell you why many people do not learn in church most times when we come we assume that the men of God do not know anything and we hope let's see if there is one or two things they have to say and so we continue to recycle pain and abort cheap victories but things are changing in Jesus name that by reason of this conference God is going to begin to help us with exactitude to pursue the requisite level of knowledge and please look up do you know that if you do not have sufficient knowledge you can have knowledge but not sufficient to bring you the results you're looking for. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2, please. We'll find somewhere to pray. I pray that God has helped us this morning. First Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2. First Corinthians 8 and verse 2. Here's what it says. If any man think that he knoweth anything, is it in your Bible? It says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to follow many of us here have been involved in the academia or in teaching a student who gets five percent a student who gets 25 percent a student who gets 30 percent and a student who gets 35 percent a little question for you who was the highest of the four but who passed the exam Are you seeing that now? So if you are giving an award for the highest, even the one who failed the least will come to collect an award. But based on the grading system, both the person who collected the award and the person who did not even write the exam will be in the same group. This is how it is for many people. Sometimes, respectfully speaking, the little we know becomes a barrier to stop us from knowing more. In fact, ethically speaking, the reason for most people's failure is their success. You can succeed in a way that it makes you fail. Because now you will say, is there anything more to learn? Look at Paul. At the zenith of his apostolic ministry, had this to say, that I may know him. A man who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament that I may know him. Grace and peace, he says in 1 Peter chapter 1, just write it for reference, First, 2 Peter chapter 1 from verse 2 to 4, he says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through knowledge, through knowledge. 
Grace and peace is multiplied through knowledge. When people send me text messages commending me and saying, you know, their honest reviews as to the things that they feel God is doing in and through my life, I appreciate them sincerely, but I remain a student of knowledge. There are many things I do not know, and I am not ashamed of it. I pursue knowledge with, with the determination of someone just starting. You watch those who collect the awards in any Olympic race and all of that. As soon as they are done, they pat themselves in the back for just a few, maybe some time to rest and they get over walking again, preparing for the next season. You know champions because of their determination to increase, not from a competitive standpoint. They know that many people depend on their knowledge. Can I tell you something about growth? Nobody claps for you for the same realm twice. Once they clap for you once, that is over for that dimension. If you do not grow, you will never receive any applause again. Number three, what is the third biblical index that measures growth and maturity? The outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life. The third biblical index to know that a believer has now attained unto maturity is the outworkings of the power and the ability of God in and through your life. Wow. When we talk about the power of God, we're not necessarily talking about the charismatism around the display of power. We're talking about rising to a point of power and authority where what brought you down yesterday can no longer bring you down today because you have gained strength. Remember the Bible says the people that do know their God they shall be strong. Strength is proof that you know God. What is strength? Capacity. 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 It says if you turn aside in the day of battle your strength is small. There are people today who will tell you, I'm angry, I'm going to leave God, I trusted him to do something in my life, he did not do it, I'm hanging my boots, I'm tired. You see, that is, that is proof that your strength is small. When you get to a point where you build capacity, there is no going back. You burn that bridge behind you. For me to live is Christ, and even if I die, is gain. I fear that the Christianity we practice in Nigeria and Africa, if not edited by love, but firmness, will not stand the test of time. Believers cheapen themselves at the slightest challenge. Hallelujah. For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. I have met many dangers in my life as a man of God. It is, it, is only, it is only the God of heaven who has kept me. I can begin to tell you stories. The work that the Lord has given me started in Zaria. And for those of you who know Zaria, you know that that, that is a, it, it's a vola. I don't know how many crises happened in my presence. strength. Some of you are already giving up because you have not built strength. I remember one time I was rushing to go for a meeting to connect, to take a flight and go for a meeting and as soon as I was on my way to Kaduna they sent a text, the airline that time I think it was Chanchangi or IRS and they now said the flight had been cancelled. I just told the driver, I said can you go to my Duguri? It was my Duguri I was going. It was a Friday it is dangerous to be around the road on a Friday afternoon in those regions. I said, can you go? He said, yes. I said, let's go. Because the believers, they needed a lot of strengthening. And I said, I was coming. They were so excited because several men of God would say, we're not coming. We love you, but we'll pray for you from afar and then send support. But you said you answered the call. I passed Kano barely one hour when there was a bomb blast. And they declared curfew. 
You see that? That night, this, this is a long time ago, I slept in Potiskum at the gate because they were already fighting in Meduguri. And they said, you have to sleep. I slept inside the vehicle there. And I said, Lord, if it is for you, I will spend my life serving your purposes. This thing is not, when you see God lifting people by ask questions, behind every glory you see, there is a story. Just because you don't know the story does not mean there is no story. Hallelujah. I remember when I got there, I looked at the people and I said, my God. They were happy, they cried, they cried, they cried, they cried. I'm sure that we'll be able to make a sacrifice for those outside, even if it means to stand. Praise the name of the Lord. The outworkings of the power of God. Please look at me. You need the ability of God in your life. Principalities and powers and demons are real. The Bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of God's kingdom. Are we together? It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Please look up. There are many of us right now, the situations that we are going through, I tell you by the authority of scripture, is not a medical situation. It's a demonic situation. And if not dealt with by the power of God, it will eat up and destroy your life just like that. This is not about some charismatism or, or abuse of power and all of this. I'm talking about the provision that the word of God gives. God would be irresponsible to leave us in a domain cohabiting with Satan and not give us the means to be able to stand and defend ourselves against the wiles of the devil. Can I tell you this? If you do not have power, the devil would destroy your children destroy your future destroy your health destroy your finances the language that the realm of the spirit understands is power it's as honest and simple as that apologies to those who are not science-based but for those who are science-based when there is one of sir isaac newton's law i'll make it simple so everyone understands Sir Isaac Newton, a former scientist and natural physicist, he postulated a few laws, the laws of mechanics. And one of them, I just want to pick one of them. He said that a body will remain in a state of rest or uniform motion. Is that true? Except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. In other words, you leave a thing here, you will find it here after 1,000 years. If it must move, there must be a force greater than what is keeping it to move it. That means your destiny will remain there. Age will not change it until a force moves you. Our children will remain there. L let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace, I've had the honor of ministering to people and conditions that if not by the mercy of God, those people would have died like chickens. We cannot allow the devil to keep oppressing us. Now, I know that when we talk about the ministry of power, I submit to you there have been abuses and carelessness and all kinds of things in the body of Christ, you know, manipulations and this. I know, but just because something unreal is there does not mean something real is not there. Believe me, if your life is bankrupt of genuine spiritual power, you will not be able to survive the days we are in. Psalm 66 verse 3. Say unto God, it says, Psalm 66 and verse 3, How terrible art thou in your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves It takes the power of God. Equa Plateau Church, please listen to me. There are many people destined by God upon the plateau that God has directed them to come and be blessed, to come and be changed, even in this assembly. But I submit to you, 
Satan will not fold his arms and allow the families that need to come and be blessed. There are gifted and skilled people that God has sent through our prayers to come. Paul said, I desire to come to you. Even I, Paul, once and again, he said, but Satan hindered us. Satan will hinder anything that is pro-Jesus, including your life. Make a declaration that my children will serve God. I will serve God. You have drawn a line. Satan will say, all right. This is not about being fanatical. This is the truth. I remember a gentleman who he was the only son of the mother. Graduated first class, true story. He went to collect his um, certificate, his statement. On his way returning, a, a bike or a car just came and cleared. The mother was rejoicing and said, I may have been a failure in life, but thank God he raised somebody that I will be able to rejoice before I pass on. And she just had a report that they just, just cleared. Don't tell me it just happened. No, sir. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. There is a real devil. There is a real adversary who is determined to thwart the purposes of God. Satan will not fold his arms and watch Plateau Church continue to rise and go from glory to glory, but it will take power to keep rising in spite of. If you believe, please say amen. amen. That Equa Plateau Church will keep going from glory to glory and grace to grace. It takes power. It takes power to move through the vicissitudes of life and to be able to emerge. There are many sincere people today. Graduates love the Lord just when God wants to open a door for a good job to help the families. Here comes Satan again. I wish I didn't have to tell you this, but I'll be lying to you. I have to bring to you the whole counsel of God. I have been a victim of demonic oppression myself. So I know what I'm saying. Hallelujah. I used to have a friend. He was a classmate. This gentleman got married. The wife just had a baby. And he called me one day crying. He was returning back. The wife was returning back. And then I think he had some encounters or something, some demonic things. And the wife and the baby burned to ashes. I don't mean to scare you. And I'm not playing with your mind. I'm only telling you the truth. If Satan has not come near you, don't think he doesn't know you are there. It is only that you have not made any impact for Jesus enough to attract his presence. But he's coming. So don't you laugh at the people. If you see any family that Satan is trying to attack, don't just laugh and feel they are not spiritual. Pray for them and pray for yourself. Because he came to Jesus. He will come to everyone. Jesus himself, you would think as the son of God, he would not come to him. Satan cometh to me, Jesus said. But it is my prayer that before he gets to you, the whole armor of God would have fortified you. That you will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Paul's final word to the church in Ephesus mentoring them on the things of the kingdom equipping them like this he said finally brethren 6 and verse 10 be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might the next verse please he says put on the whole armor the whole armor that means make sure that you are fortified so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil please look up you come up from a family and you say, Lord, would you empower me financially? I want to see to it that your church grows. I want to see to it that there is no need. I want you to know that it's not only angels that hear that prayer. Satan is hearing it too. 
what did you say that through your resources the kingdom will advance that is the end of it so the trouble that is in your place of work men are only puppets there are spirits behind the scenes manipulating men but you see I, I, I say this respectfully the ignorance of many believers is their unbecoming we interpret things sociologically why do people just hate me like that oh Elizabeth it's not about your barrenness God was Satan was fighting the arrival of John who will ordain Jesus it is not about your barrenness let me tell you this interpret every negative thing in your life as it connects to kingdom come there is nothing Satan does except he finds that it has a bearing to the purposes of God this way you interpret the things happening in your life and in others knowing this gives you the compassion to stand by people in their down times and say I know the fact that it looks like this family you are responsible you are loving the Lord but father is not working mother is not working we know that there is something Satan has seen that your excelling will do something to the kingdom are we together for everybody here we're about to pray who has experienced an attack and is experiencing some kind of attack in your life I am reading the writings on the wall for you believe me there may be roles you may have played in partnership or through ignorance but largely it is that Satan has plotted that graph and found out that if Elizabeth has a baby John will come and John will ordain Jesus who will save the world and so we fight Elizabeth it takes power to thwart the purposes of Satan not suggestions not sympathy when you read the messianic prophecy Isaiah 61 from verse 1 to 4 Jesus reiterated it in Luke chapter 4 also here's what Jesus said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me Isaiah the prophet was speaking about Jesus for he hath anointed me, he says, to preach glad tidings to the poor or the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to set at liberty them that are in prison. Do you know there are men who are in prison? You would not see a physical prison. You know you are in prison where the only thing growing in your life is your age. When nothing else grows in your life, that is bondage. I wish I were lying I would have just said sorry I'm joking but I'm very very serious only God knows the schemings of Satan over your life between now and December don't sit down and say it will not happen many have made that arrogant bold claim to their detriment it will take power behold I give you power he says This has nothing to do, like I said, with abuse of power and fanatism. I know that there are people who have just made a jamboree and, you know, childishness and, and ill prepared people. Here and there, people have made mistakes around when it has to do with abuse of spiritual gifts. But please do not get into criticizing power because you will be making a mistake that may cost you your lifetime. It is true. It takes power to remain a man of God loving Jesus the moment you answer the call of God upon your life there are demons assigned to you to destroy you parents only God knows the schemings of Satan over your children to rubbish and thwart their life you may ask what is Satan looking for to use your life as a canvas and write that God is not faithful But in this conference and in the name of Jesus, I dare by the Spirit of God to tell you that anyone's life that has come under captivity, this is the season where God sets you free. In the name of Jesus Christ. How about those who start a thing and never complete it? God is called Alpha and Omega, Jesus. Why do you start things and not finish? 
we give all kinds of explanation and it, it can the, the physical reason may be government or individual or antagonisms but I, I, I tell you those are just the obvious answers not the right ones Satan is the, the control room behind the pain John chapter 10 and verse 10 it says the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy do you know what that means you never see Satan around your life until there is something to kill something to steal and something to destroy a particular man of God not too long went to bury his mother and when he got there they were done with the burial and then he was in the room with his dear wife and according to her she said she began to see light like a man flashing a torch light just at the window and she was tapping her husband say my husband who is flashing light at the door and she turned when she turned back she saw a dead body leaning on her that was it this is the world we live in this is not to make you fear my Bible says now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph but you will not triumph just because you want to it will take power hallelujah I hope that as God grants grace by evening we'll be able to have the time even if it's just two to five minutes to speak over people and let me request respectfully from the leadership that if you will allow may I request that in coming by evening I want everyone to please write your prayer request before the Lord do we agree well it's subject to the leadership that we will pray I assure you that which has kept you down if God be God in this conference this will be the end of it we do not make our boast by reason of anything we have in ourselves the Bible says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves but it says our sufficiency is of God who have made us able ministers after the new covenant for the flesh the letter killeth but the spirit gives life so I want to please plead and request even for our family connecting from across the globe I'm sure that through the social media platforms you can submit your prayer request everything that has threatened you let's bring it before the Lord are we together now yes and cry to the God of heaven who is able to arise that your life will have a consolation that indeed Jesus Christ is alive not just because you read it you can taste and see that the Lord is good let's wrap up number four the first biblical index for growth and maturity I said is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of Jesus Christ in experience number two your depth of the comprehension of the principles of the kingdom and that authority in this kingdom is knowledge dependent the dominion in this kingdom depends on knowledge number three the outworkings of the power of God in and through your life and then number four the fourth biblical index to measure growth and maturity in this kingdom is your love life love for God and love for your fellow man first John please chapter 4 and verse 7 first John chapter 4 your love life love for God and love for men first John chapter 4 please please be patient and watch while I read beloved it says let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God next verse he that loveth not he says knoweth not God for God is love next verse in this was manifested the love of God towards us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him it's a long reading please keep on media hearing is love not that we loved God 
but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. In fact, let's just stop here. The full text is 7 to 21. But he says that we must love God and then love one another. Love God and love one another. John chapter 13, please, and verse 35. John 13, 35. John 13, 35. Here's what it says. By this, the demonstration of this love, shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we'll look at verse 31. But Paul there from chapter 12 began to mentor the church. Now theologically speaking, at that time, there was such a move of the Spirit, an outpouring of the Spirit as we call it, over the church in Corinth. And there were all kinds of manifestations of the gift of the Spirit. But with these manifestations, there was a lot of lawlessness. So Paul had to come to set things in order. Are we together? To the end that all things be done decently and in order. And part of that conference he held, now he began to help them understand what was happening to them. And when we get to 12 and verse 31, he now said different things about the gifts of the spirit, the gifts of prophecy, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. When we get to 31, you would think there is nothing else. He says, but covet earnestly the best gifts. And yet, show I unto you a more excellent way. Now 13 verse 1. He's showing us a more excellent way. 13 verse 1, the next chapter now. Chapter 13 verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men, he says. The word tongue, there's an ancient word for language. The language of men and of angels. And I have not love. He says, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Next verse. Though I bestow all my goods, I give. This is verse what now? Is that two? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. Charity. And I give my body to be burned. Sacrifice. And I have not love. It profited me nothing. Verse 3. Okay, now, okay. I'm sure that's, let's, let's just continue. Charity or love suffereth long. It is kind. It envieth not. It vaunted not itself. It is not puffed up. He's given the character of love. Next verse, please. It doth not behave itself unseemingly. It seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked. It thinketh no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Next verse. Love never fails. In fact, let's stop there. Very powerful statement. Love never fails. Do you know what this means? That means anything you see failing, add love to it. He says, love never fails. A home that is failing, add love to it. A spiritual life that is failing, like an ingredient, add love to it. Love never fails. He calls love the more excellent way. The more excellent way of preaching is to preach in love. The more excellent way of being a businessman is to be a businessman full of love. The more excellent way to be a father is to be a father with love, a mother with love, a child with love, a CEO with love. That when that love factor is there, you have the bond of perfectness. Can I tell you, I know many prayer warriors who do not love people even though they love God. And the Bible says, how do you say you love God whom you have not seen? 
Many people love Jesus today simply because they've not seen him. If Jesus arrives on earth after one week, their love will expire. They will be tired of Jesus and fight him in a way that will be more than the way the scribes and the Pharisees fought him. Let me tell you this. Love, I'm wrapping up now, is based on a revelation. It has nothing to do with emotions. There is, there are certain things that if you do not know, you cannot love men. Two things I will tell you about men that will help you love men. Number one, the best of any man is still a man. That is the first information about men. You want to be able to love men, you must know that the best of every man, no matter how well intentioned, is still a man. If you don't know this, you cannot love men. Number two, love is derived from the revelation that the same way Jesus Christ showed you undeserving kindness and mercy, the same way if he were to leave us to fight for our salvation, none of us would be saved. The Bible says our righteousness is as filthy rags. You can love the unlovable when you understand what Jesus has done. These are the four biblical indices to measure growth and maturity. So the next time you say, I am a matured Christian, we do not argue, but we bring the litmus test. Let me see. Is there inexperience, the formation of the character of Christ in you? Number two, your level of spiritual enlightenment. Do you have sufficient knowledge to be able to command the kind of result that brings glory to the name of the Lord? Number three, can we see the outworking of the power of God in your life? I didn't have the time to teach on power. If you're really studying on power, you have to go to Genesis chapter 1. God himself showed us how power works. In this kingdom, you are as powerful to the degree to which what you say comes to pass. That is awesome. and God said let there be and there was and he saw that what he said was good if you say especially in the name of Jesus and it does not happen something is wrong when he came to the centurion remember the centurion said no don't bother coming to my home I am a man of authority also I understand authority I have soldiers under me I say to one go and you will go to another come and you will come to another do this and you will do it Jesus I know that you are not by yourself you are also under authority speak the word only and Jesus said who taught you this I have not found this faith this understanding not in Israel can I tell you the day you speak over your life and over the people around you and it comes to pass. I'm not talking of prophesying. I'm talking of declaring with authority. Your words now become like the word of God. That you take the word of God and you put it on the lips of faith. And when you say God bless you and people say amen, it's not just a ritual. God bless you means all that it takes and God is able to make all grace abound towards you, he says, so that ye having sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So when you say God bless you, do you know what you are saying? May God search your life for what is missing and ensure that it comes, whatever will make you sufficient. That is the meaning of God bless you. That is the meaning of bless you. Yet people say amen and in all honesty, nothing happens. We're going to pray this night we would be looking at another subject as I wrap up my session the gospel now we looked at growth and maturity and then now we'll be looking at the subject of kingdom advance and ministry by the time we return in the evening we're going to pray I want you to talk to the Lord whilst you're seated and let it come as a cry from the depth of your heart. Lord, I desire genuine growth. I desire to increase. 
from the lens of this teaching and this conference I have seen that I need to contend for exactitude in my spiritual life talk to the Lord just one or two minutes and then we're done for this session someone is talking to Jesus let it be from the depth of your heart Father, I desire that my life becomes an expression of the character of the Christ in experience, in words, in lifestyle, in my communication, in my understanding. For some, you are praying and say, Lord, I confess ignorance in many areas. Many areas that support my excelling as a believer. I confess that there is so much I do not know. Help me. I am willing to learn and I'm willing to contend for exact growth through knowledge. Number three, for many of us, we've been buffeted by a plethora of ills around our lives. Health conditions, mental conditions, demonic oppressions, all kinds of stagnations and, and, and ill doings of darkness in our life. It's time for us to pray. Father, that you will visit me and supply the requisite level of spiritual power it takes to walk in the experience of liberty. And finally, we are going to pray for our love life. The Bible says it is by this that all men will know. They will not know that we are people of God just by oratory or good preaching just by intelligence or money or cars and houses, accolades, as important as these things are. The Bible says the one biblical index that all men will use to know that we are his disciples is when we have love one for another. Now you are going to pray, Father, take away this bitterness in my life. I'm tired of holding on to bitterness whether against members, against family, against my brother, my sister, my husband, my wife, against the church, against eldership. Lord, I am ready to grow. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, it says, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and even despised the shame. Talk to the Lord in prayer. Grant me the grace. Let love begin to manifest in my life. The grace to forbear. The grace to forbid. Petty things that continue to clamp down my life and my progress. I'm ready to let it go. A new me is evolving from this conference. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please look up. This is the reason why we come to church. These four pillars I gave you is the reason why you should invite people to come. So the next time they ask you, why are you going to church? Now you have an answer. I am going to church because it is the platform authorized to sponsor my conformity to the image of the Christ in experience. Number two, it is the platform that provides me the opportunity to gain spiritual intelligence as I am methodically mentored doctrine after doctrine topic after topic according to acts chapter 2 and verse 42 the bible says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in the breaking of bread and in prayers and in fellowship this was the strategy of the early church they continued steadfastly in the doctrine of the apostles and fellowship breaking of bread and prayers that's how they became mighty people. So when you come to church this evening, tomorrow, and any other day, have it at the back of your mind that you're not doing the pastor or the elders a favor. It is you signing that register in the realm of the spirit. You are showing God your commitment and your intention for growth. 
I am coming because I desire to be like Jesus in experience. I am coming because I am aware of the vast ignorance and I need the requisite level of knowledge that supports my growth and my excelling. Number three, I am coming because I am aware that there is an adversary determined to thwart my life and then I come to access the power of God, the energizing of the spirit that gives me the stamina to be able to face life. Finally, I am coming because I am developing like that metamorphosis that happens to an insect from egg, larva, pupa and adult. I am evolving into a new me. One who is full of love. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the privilege of your word. The Bible declares again that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. We have submitted ourselves to your word and Lord we thank you for that which has come from the mouth of the Spirit I pray in the name of Jesus that the grace to walk in keeping with these truths that they, they do not end up as mere discussions but that they sustain the power to transform us in the name of Jesus Lord I am praying that you will bless everyone who has made the sacrifice to come here and to connect even um, to listen and to learn I pray that you will bless them Father we pray for the meeting in the evening we pray that it will be a moment of encounter even by your spirit thank you again oh God for our pastors, our elders they that labor in word and doctrine even over Equa Plateau Church thank you for the membership the loyalty, the love, the sacrifice the forbearance Thank you because you are taking this family of faith from one level of glory to the other. That Equa Plateau Church will be like a trophy lifted even over the plateau. In the name of Jesus, we pray that as we disperse for a while, that you grant us grace. That we return refreshed, we return um, with greater passion even to learn. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. For in Jesus' name, I pray. Hello, scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.